Hi guys, welcome back to my YouTube channel. Um, hopefully you join me for the first video, which I took you through how to train push um, with minimal equipment. And in today's video, I'm gonna be showing you how to train pull. So the main working muscles here are going to be lats, spinal erectors, biceps, um, mid-back, etc, etc. The guys which are going to be responsible for building density throughout the back. Um, now what we have to understand is that throughout this period, if we don't have much equipment, um, again, we're going to be limited in our ability to actually accrue new tissue. Um, but what we're going to look to do is kind of hold on and reserve what we have built what we can look to do to preserve what we've built, provide an adequate stimulus for muscle to say, okay, we need to hang around. And that's essentially what we're gonna do. So, let's go to the garage, and I'm gonna show you guys how to train pull with minimal equipment. I'm getting more and more cheesy as these videos go along. <laughs> We've got the bands, the same resistance tubes or actual bands. So like um, resistance bands such as um, these ones here. So like the black one, the red one and all the different resistances. Um, and then the other equipment that we're gonna be using is the carabiners, so the small clips um, and then very light dumbbells. So obviously some of the movements do require light dumbbells. But if you haven't got dumbbells, you can do these exercises um oh fuck me why am i zooming in that much what have i done that is an un unattractive angle get back get back okay cool amateur um so if you haven't got the dumbbells you can in fact still um you know elicit the same kind of a stimulus here just with more band tension so again the same rule as in as with the first video is that you have to become your own engineer um, in terms of engineering exercises. Um, so yeah, same equipment, um, same same kind of groove, same kind of vibe, just throwing together movements with bands, with cuffs, with light dumbbells, lightweight, um, and just, um, yeah, let's, uh, let's do it. So the first exercise that we're gonna do is a straight arm pull down. Um, it is hella sunny today, by the way. Um, so I'm gonna be like squinting for the whole video. Um, so the first exercise I'm gonna do is straight arm pull down. Uh, normally I do this on a cable machine, um, but it's really good with bands. So I'm gonna get that set up now. Basically what we're gonna do is set up the resistance bands from the garage grafters, um, and we're just gonna hold onto the bands um, and facilitate a pulling down movement. Now, this works the lat throughout their full range. So we're gonna start in a fully lengthened range, pulling all the way down and getting it nice and short at the bottom. So it's a really good movement and one that I like to put in the beginning of a plan um, to really fire the lats up and get them ready for um, you know, your heavier loading movements. Um, so basically what I've done, just so you can see initially, is um, attached this around the top of the garage grafter there, but you can use anything, it doesn't have to be a garage grafter. Um, it could be you know, a banister where you're in your house or anything like that. Um, so it's basically attached around the top there and we're just simply going to hold on to the, uh, the ends, like so. You can attach cuffs if you like, but I personally actually like just to hold on, because normally in a gym I would just use a rope and just hold on to the rope. Um, so it's kind of the same principle here, we're just holding on to the band. Okay, so what we're gonna do is grab hold of either end of the ropes, situate yourself just back in line. What we typically want to try and uh, facilitate is when we're pulling through the band, we're trying to line up with the line of pull through the lap. So for example, we wouldn't want to be straight here because if you think about the lat running down here, we're not going to be anywhere near the line in which this is pulling. So if we climb back a little bit here and lean slightly over, now we're lining up nicely with the lats. So we're, at, we're able to take them right into that fully lengthened range and then drive the elbows right down, tuck them in to the side of the hips, but keeping them elbows tucked in nice and close. And we should really feel a good contraction through the lats. Really control and milk the eccentric phase, nice and slow, and then we're driving in, squeeze at the bottom, right into the lat, and dig right in. And I do find with this one that just getting that slight lean over just enables you to A, get a better kind of stable position of hip flexion to, uh, to work from, but also just enables you to kind of 
really get that good lengthening on the lat on the uh, eccentric phase. And that is the rope dual arm pull down um, in which we're gonna start with. And then we're gonna move on to a single arm dumbbell row. So a single arm dumbbell row is a movement that a lot of you are probably gonna be used to using more load than you're probably gonna have at home. Um, so what this is basically gonna enable us to do um, by cuffing at the elbow is just apply resistance when we just start getting into that mid range of the row. And what that's going to do is essentially just to make it harder. It's going to place more of a challenge through the lat where it is strongest. So we're also looking to kind of line up with, um, you know, the, the, the strength profile of your lats um, with the resistance profile of the movement itself. So as we're rowing, getting into that strongest position, we're getting that nice little challenge on the lats and having to kind of really pull against that. For the single arm row, basically just so you can see what I've done here, um, I've attached a band looped around itself from a low set point. So this, this can be underneath anything that can just hold onto the band. Um, and then this band is gonna run and attach onto the trustworthy cuff. This cuff's gonna go around the elbow. We wanna set it up so that it drops off um, sort of where we don't need it, if you like. Like I have done here, around the elbow, leaning into the bench now. Obviously I understand a lot of people won't have benches, so this can be anything, it could be a chair. Bring yourself forward, stabilize the position, working leg in line with working arm, and we want this band to drop off tension around here and just start adding a challenge around about this position here. So kind of midway through the movement, midway through the shortening of the lat. I'm just gonna, for the sake of the video, use a 10. 10 kilo dumbbell, like so. So you're literally gonna add the cuff around the elbow, like that. Grab onto the dumbbell like so. Situate yourself back, leaning into the bench. Brace the core, allow the dumbbell just to pull you forward into that extended position through the lat, and then just drive the elbow back and across the body and tuck it in right down nice and low in towards the base of the spine. Extend, the band's gonna pull you forward, the dumbbell's gonna pull you forward. Pull back through the elbow, down and across the body. Squeeze right back in nice and low. And that's the movement there. It's a really cool movement. And it's, again, it feels completely different to a normal row because you're getting kind of two birds with one stone in, in terms of the stimulus that it's provided. Um, Cause you've got obviously the external load of the dumbbell through the lat um, and then that nice little extra additional tension overload as we're just getting it short um, from the band. So it's a really, really good movement. And one that I actually find um, allows you to really hone in on the, on the tension and really kind of improve your ability to put the tension exactly where you want it. Because I see a lot of the time people doing dumbbell rows and just launching the weight, um, you know, as we're overloading the weight. Whereas with this, you kind of lose any momentum, any inertia, um, and really kind of have to create that intramuscular tension through, you know, your own mechanisms and your own mind-muscle connection. So it's a really, really good movement. We have done the straight arm pull down and a single arm row. So we've basically worked the lats. Um, we're now gonna move on to a more of a uh, compound movement, um, RDL. So Romanian deadlift, one of my favorite movements um, ever. And what we're basically doing here is again, using the bands to add resistance to a dumbbell Romanian deadlift. Um, so we're gonna add a band around the back of the neck and just simply perform a dumbbell Romanian deadlift. So we've got that nice overloading tension. Now, depending on you know how strong you are um, and your, your ability to facilitate this movement, um, we'll kind of gauge what band resistance you want to use, but you probably want to opt for a slightly stronger band with this one. So I'm going to demonstrate this movement with a green band around the neck, like so. And then we're basically just going to stand on the band. So I will set this up in position so I can show you. Now again, due to the fact that we haven't got the luxury of having external load, we have to really, really, really try and hone in on the muscles that are trying to be recruited here. So majority of the tissues that we're trying to work here are hamstrings and glutes. Um, we're also gonna get a lot of load through the spinal erectors, the, the lower and mid-back musculature as well, um, the lats. To be honest with you, everything's being worked here, but what I want you to really think about is controlling and trying to get as much stress eccentrically, so that's the lowering phase through the hamstrings. And think about really, actually think about when you're doing this movement, think about the hamstrings lengthening out. And if you can think about the anatomical process that's going on, not just now, but in any, any movement, um, it's gonna enable you to kind of connect better with regards to that mind-muscle stimulation. Okay, we're good. So the band's gonna go underneath the feet, 
like so. Adopt the normal foot placement that you would with an RDL. For me, I'll go for quite narrow, so about shoulder width. The bands are gonna go over the back of the neck. We're gonna grab the dumbbells. I've just got the 10 kilo dumbbells. The first thing you wanna think about breaking is the hips. As you bring the chest forward, the hips come back, really locking into the hamstrings, stretching through and coming into the deepest available range. And then we're just pushing through the hips to shorten the hammies, like so. So again, chin down to keep the back nice and neutral. Think about driving the chest forward, hips back, lowering yourself down, stretching through the hamstrings, and then we're pushing through the hips, contract. And on this one, I would advise a nice slow eccentric of three seconds down, or three or four seconds down on the eccentric face. So we're gripping onto the hamstrings, uh, a little pause in the bottom, and then driving out of that bottom um, and contracting through the hamstrings. So we have now, whoop, we have now done. We've worked the lats, we've done the straight up pull down the rows, and now we've moved on to our compound movement with the RDLs. Um, so we're now gonna look to target the mid back. And what we're gonna do for that is, again, you guessed it, bands. Um, so we're gonna attach the bands from a higher banister, go after, get it right. Um, and we're gonna look to perform a wide row. Um, and for this one, it's gonna be really beneficial if you can get some D handles. So D handles, um, are basically something which is going to enable you to manipulate your grip much better and lock into the tissue that's trying to be worked, like so, D-handles. Um, so we're going to attach a D-handle to either end of the band. Um, I'm actually going to use the resistance tubes, um, which I used for a couple of the exercises in the first video and also for the straight arm pull downs. Um, these are really good, I actually got these from, from Argos. They're called men's health resistance tubes. Um, and I, I think I got them before the, the mad rush and they all sold out, but they're really good. But you can, oh, fuck me. But you can use just a normal band if you need to. So use whatever your vibe is. So what I'm having to do with this one, because the grafters are a little bit high up to facilitate what we're trying to achieve here, uh, I'm just attaching it around. I've just got a barbell rack here set up, um, which I'm fortunate enough to have. Um, so I'm just gonna set it up on that. But when you're doing this at home, wherever you are, you just wanna set something up around about the right height so you're getting the right resistance drop off and um, resistance application and drop off, if that makes sense. You know, I, I don't know what you're gonna be using um, to, to do this. So, um, you know, what you have available to you. So just find something which enables you to, for example, I'm sitting up here and I'm gonna sit sort of down there just in front of it. And that's, I've already just tried it and it's setting up quite a nice little drop off and overload. So yeah, just find whatever you have available to you <clears throat> and, um, and do that. So I've attached the D handles on the end here like so. So I've attached the D handles um, on either end of the band. And it's again, as, just, as I said, it's attached at that high point. And we want to set it up so it's got a nice line as we're pulling down into and through the mid back. So position yourself just in front of it like so. Bend the knees into your most stable position. Extend through the low back, so you don't want to be slouching forward. Extend through the low back, and we're starting up here nice and high with the um, chest up, sort of pointing towards the line of pull here. And then we're thinking about driving the elbows back. And as we do, we're just retracting the scapula behind us to contract all the muscles in the mid back. I can't reach around, but all the muscles in the mid back. So we're, we're not thinking so much about rowing through the lats with this one. We're thinking more about rowing and bringing the elbows out wide and finishing in that position there with the chest up and the mid back musculature all contracted nicely. That wasn't a great amount of um, resistance, but the same with any movement, you can add as many bands as you need to add to make that as challenging as you need it to make it. So, you know, if we start getting inventive with it and I've added another red one or a yellow one um, or whatever combination of bands that you have available, we can look to very quickly make that harder. Um, and then obviously another way we can make it harder is just actually situating yourself further back. Um, so you're using, you know, more stretch through the band and getting more uh, resistance through the bands as well. So the next, there we go. Uh, so the next exercise we're gonna do is targeting the rear delts. We're gonna do one movement on the rear delts to isolate uh, the rear delts. How many times can you say rear delts in one sentence? Rear delts. Um, so again, we're gonna use the bands. 
familiar trend. Um, and we're gonna attach them from a high point again, and we're looking to do a reverse fly, or a rear delt fly, or whatever you wanna call it, which typically we would normally do, or I would normally do on a cable machine. Um, but we, we, we're using the, uh, um, the bands here, and it's actually gonna create a very, very similar stimulus, apart from the fact that we haven't got the load, we've just got the band tension. But in terms of the movement, you can actually replicate a very similar um, stimulus. Um, and with the rear delts not being a huge muscle, they don't need a great substantial amount of weight um, to be overloaded. So, you know, with high rep ranges on this exercise, you can actually get a really, really good little stimulus. So for this one, what I've been doing is actually attaching it to this bit off the top of the garage here, uh, like so. So in an attempt to get some hypertrophy through the rear delts, but also not break the garage. It's a fine balance between those two factors at the moment. Um, and we're gonna use the uh, cuffs. That's not a cuff, it's a D-handle. I need to change that for the cuffs. But we're gonna use the cuffs because I really like to use cuffs on a rear delt fly, um, simply due to the fact that it takes out the arm musculature, so we're not having to kind of grip it. Um, and when we're kind of getting to that fail point and really focusing on trying to get the tension through the rear delts and, and make sure that the rear delts fail, it's very difficult, it can be very difficult not to really grip and then start overloading the forearms and get all those guys come into play, in the biceps. Um, whereas going for a cuff and actually kind of going for an open palm grip and just pulling outwards um, really enables you to hone in on what's trying to be worked much better. Um, so I really, really like to uh, opt for a cuff. So as you can see, we've got the band hanging from the garage um, thing, thing, oh, hold on. Um, I've attached the cuffs with the carabiners on either end. I'm then gonna, I actually like to place my hand like that. Boom. I find that that gets the best kind of connection for the rear delts, but you can put them slightly higher if you want to. Um, so yeah, so we put the cuffs around the wrist like so. Step yourself back and away. Palms up nice and high. Bring yourself back so you're getting a good amount of tension on the rear delts. And then it's gonna drop off quite significantly there. Whereas usually with a cable machine, as we come in all the way, we'd still get that kind of torque output demand on the rear delt, whereas we don't get that here. So our range of motion is gonna be a little bit shorter. So typically you'd wanna to come to around about here and then drive out as far as you can. Think about trying to get the elbows as far out as you possibly can. Almost like you're trying to touch the elbows on the opposite walls. So driving outwards as far as you possibly can. Then you're gonna feel a good hard pinch through the rear delts and then just controlling the eccentric. And again, that's gonna drop off around there. So there's no need to come all the way in because we haven't got that tension overload on the rear delts in that position. So your range of motion's here and control it back. And again, two ways we can make this harder is step further back or just add more band resistance. <laughs> Okay, and that is the banded rear delt flies. Really, really good movement. And that is back pretty much done. Um, we're gonna move on to biceps. So we're gonna do two bicep movements. So with the band, what we're gonna do is we're gonna set the D handles up onto the band and position it from a low set point, And we're gonna perform an isometric hold before moving into the bicep curl. And what that's gonna do is it's gonna kind of pre-fatigue the biceps in their mid to shorten range. So we're getting that isometric static fatigue um, and then we move straight onto the curls. So we're kind of really looking to overload the tissue here with metabolic stress um, as opposed to external load. So for the bicep curls, what I've done is just loop that underneath. You can loop it underneath anything you want. I've looped it underneath this bench. Um, I've gone for the red and the yellow, orange, yellow, yellow band, because um, that place is quite a nice little duo of tension. So situate yourself sort of just on top of and a little bit back away from the set point. Um, I've got the D handles on each end. We're gonna perform a isometric hold first. So I'm gonna go for a 30 second hold. Uh, again, you can play around with the rep ranges. You can play around with the uh, sets and reps. But I'm gonna go for a 30 second isometric hold in that mid to shorten range. So we're not fully contracted, but we're not lengthened. We're kind of just in that mid to short range of the biceps. And I'm gonna hold that position, but try and place as much intent through the biceps. So we're not just kind of relaxing in that position. We're really trying to squeeze onto the biceps and get as much fatigue accumulated in this static hold as we possibly can. 
and then after your hold, you're just gonna move straight into the bicep curls. So with the bicep curls, make sure we're keeping the back extended, elbows tucked into the sides, and we're just driving into a fully shortened position, squeeze hard at the top for one second pause, and then controlling down. The eccentric phase, we're gonna get a drop off quicker than we would usually get a drop off on say, a barbell bicep curl or a cable curl or something like that because down here we haven't really got anything pulling against it so again the range of motion probably isn't going to be quite as full as it normally would be we're just going to start from around about here drive up good hard contraction through the bicep control it down again nice and slow three second eccentric just into that position there and then drive up squeeze and contract and that is a very good movement for the biceps um, yeah, just one set and not even that many reps on that. I can feel my biceps are quite full already. So, the last exercise on biceps um, is a TRX bicep curl. Now, a lot of you won't have a TRX. I don't have a TRX. All I've used is a daisy chain. These are actually like mountain climbing daisy chains, which I use for a lot of my banded movements in the gym. Um, you can get these off Amazon. Um, again, I'll put the links below. And all we've done is use a clip, carabiner, small little carabiner, these carabiners actually come with my uh, band set, but again, you can get carabiners um, from Amazon. Um, and I've just attached a D handle on either end. So it's set me up a nice little concoction, um, like so. And I'm gonna use this to perform TRX bicep curls, which are really, really difficult. And all we're actually looking to do is use our body weight here um, as our piece of equipment, if you like. Okay, so I've got a D handle on either end. This is attached to a very high point up in the grafters, but you can attach it any way you need to. Um, underhand grip on the handles. Situate yourself back and away from the, um, from the, the, the anchor point of the uh, ropes. Like so, feet together, allow yourself just to drop fully back. Make sure that is attached on right and that it's not gonna slip or anything because you, know, you don't wanna fall back. Um, that'd be quite a, disastrous in the pursuit of biceps. Um, so bring yourself back, feet together, try and keep a nice straight line so you don't want to allow like a dip or an overextension of the lower back. So you want to keep your um, sort of posture nice and engaged and switched on here so the abs and everything is all engaged, underhand grip, and then we're just keeping the elbows fixed and curling upwards like so, getting a good contraction through the biceps and then controlling it down nice and slow so we're fully extending like so, and get a little pause at the bottom, re-engage the biceps, drive up, squeeze, control it down nice and slow. And where you position your biceps will make it easier and harder. So to make this easier, you just allow less of your body weight to be used. So you bring your feet back a little bit, and I'm not actually working as much here. And to make it harder, you can come right down here, like so. So we're then really kind of curling the majority of your body weight. And that's the last exercise on biceps and the last exercise of the session. So just to recap, and again, I will put the full session, I don't actually think I did on the first video, which is really bad of me, but I'll put the full session up on the uh, section below um, with reps and sets and etc. And also links as to where you can get some of the equipment. But if anyone has any questions, you know, please feel free to, uh, to let me know. But yeah, just to recap, we started with the straight arm pull downs with the bands. Then we moved on to the single arm dumbbell row with a light dumbbell and the band around the cuff to add that tension. Then the third exercise, the compound movement was the dumbbell RDL with the band around the neck to add that overload. The fourth exercise was the seated high row for the mid-back musculature. Um, then we moved on to the isolation movement with the rear delt with the band. And then the two bicep exercises being the iso hold into the curls on the cables and the TRX curls to finish. So seven exercises in total. Um, and yeah, I feel pretty good after that, you know. Again, I wasn't doing the session today or anything like that, just kind of going through the exercises so you guys can apply this at home. Feel free to manipulate the exercises as you can. You know, it, it's very much a case at the moment, and this is a conversation I've been having with a lot of my clients. Um, it's a case of just using what you have available to you and just trying to make the most out of it. Um, and in this scenario, you know, that we have to see ourselves as opportunists and really try and become your own engineer with the equipment you have available. Um, and look to just kind of create what you can in order to adapt, you know, around the circumstances that we're dealt with. Just to kind of add a little bit on the end of this, um, I think this period so far has really shown us that, you know, if you really, really want something and if you really want to progress at all costs, um, you know, if something really means that much to you, then you will find a way to overcome. 
Um, and no one could have predicted that we would be in a situation where we can't train. No one predicts that we're kind of in this position now where we're, you know, limited equipment. Um, and it is obviously proving difficult for a lot of people. Um, but I think during this period, the most important thing, you know, from a training perspective is just to keep muscles stimulated, keep the mind stimulated, keep ourselves busy and active, um, and try not to kind of think about the negatives and think about what we can't do. We'd all want, we'd all like to jump on a hat squat right now. We'd all like to jump on a leg press, um, a Smith machine, but unfortunately we don't all have access to these sort of things. So we just have to not think so much about the things that we can't do and try and focus more on the things that we still can do. And I think this period is really going to help a lot of people kind of reveal um, a kind of inner sense of discipline and inner sense of um, adherence that they may not have necessarily knew that they had before. If you can keep yourself disciplined and keep yourself adherent and uh, motivated throughout this period where you know our backs, up are against, uh, our backs are against the wall and circumstances aren't the best, then just think about how much you're gonna flourish and how much you're gonna grow and progress when we're back into that environment where we have everything that we maybe potentially took for granted before. Just think about how much we're gonna be able to kind of instill this new sense found, um, this newfound sense of discipline and motivation once everything's back in our corner and we can just grow. It's gonna be brilliant, I'm looking forward to that. So just a little bit that I wanted to add on the end here guys, you know, it's really good to see that people are still um, you know, not making excuses and just putting their utmost best into their training and kind of not only looking after their muscles, but also looking after that as well. Um, hopefully you found this session really helpful. Um, as always though, if you do have any questions, please leave them in the comment section below. Um, and if you like the video, give me one of them, give me a follow, and I'll see you for the next one, um, which I'm gonna be taking you through a leg session. And I'm looking forward to that one.